Okay, <clears throat> now that we've gone over asexual reproduction, we're going to talk about how cells reprodu reproduce and create through sexual reproduction and create um, different types of cells. They create your sex cells instead of body cells. So this goes with learning target 29, explain that organisms reproduce sexually and transmit genetic information genes to the offspring. Okay, so in asexual reproduction, we start off with one sex, or I'm sorry, with one cell and created two new cells. In sexual reproduction, you have two sex cells that actually create one new cell. Okay, so that's the difference right there. Okay, we're going to look at humans. Humans, uh, the male reproductive sex cell is the sperm. The female reproductive sex cell is an egg. When the sperm and egg join, that is called fertilization. When that happens, you create a zygote, one cell that forms from fertile after fertilization. So sexual reproduction is two cells, sperm and the egg, join together, and they create one new cell. Okay, so that is sexual reproduction. So we're going to talk about the different types of cells that are created. A diploid cell contains, twin, contains pairs of chromosomes, and these are what our body cells are made up of. Our body cells are called diploid cells. Remember, our body cells contain 46 chromosomes, or 23 pairs of chromosomes, because remember, our chromosomes like to pair up. Okay? A haploid cell has no pairs and just contains half the amount of chromosomes, 23 chromosomes. So your sex cells, the sperm and the egg cell, only contain half the chromosomes. So let's take a look at this example. So here's a sperm and an egg cell. They are both haploid cells with 23 chromosomes each. If you take those two sex cells and join them together, you make a zygote, which forms after from fertilization. Now you've got 46 chromosomes and you've got a diploid cell. 46 chromosomes, 23 pairs. So this is how sexual um, reproduction works. Two cells, sperm and the egg, which contain half the chromosomes, give you one cell with 46 chromosomes. That is why we say that you get half your um, genes from one parent, the other half from the other, because each sex and egg cell contain different genes and they pair up to create one cell. Now, this one zygote cell is what all of us have started out as. All of us started out as one cell. And then that zygote went through the cell cycle, went through the process of interphase, mitosis, and cytokinesis, and then created two new cells. And then those two new cells went in through the same cycle and created more. And that's how you get an organism made up of trillions of cells, is how our cells reproduce. Okay, so now we're going to go into specifically how sex cells are formed. So all cells start off as diploid cells. That's why I just showed you. Okay, even through sexual um, reproduction, the zygote is a diploid cell that, get, that gets formed. That zygote cell, okay, contains 46 chromosomes. All your other body cells besides your sex cells will go through a cell cycle called interphase mitosis cytokinesis, what we just, um, what you just watched a video that on. So most of your cells in your body will go through this phase, okay? They'll go through um, interphase mitosis and cytokinesis. Now, in order to create those sex cells, those sex cells that have half the amount of chromosomes. Sex cells are different. So sex cells, okay, a diploid cell that starts off with 46 chromosomes will go through a different cycle. So in order to create those sex cells, the sperm and egg cells, the diploid cells will not do this. They will go through what's called interphase meiosis 1 and meiosis 2, which I'm going to explain right now. Okay, so remember, after interphase, those 46 chromosomes have been duplicated into 92 chromosomes. 
So when a, a, um, a cell starts to go through meiosis 1, it starts out with 96 chromosomes, just like in mitosis. And just like meiosis 1 is the same thing as mitosis. We're going through the same exact phases. So you have 96 chromosomes that go through prophase. That's where the chromosomes start showing up, the nuclear membrane disappears. Then those 96 chromosomes pair up and make 46 pairs of 96 chromosomes, and they pair up in the middle of the cell. Okay, that's what metaphase is. Okay, those chromosomes are lining up in the middle of the cell. There's 46 pairs of 96 chromosomes. Then in anaphase, you've got those pairs splitting. So we've got 46 on one side of the cell, 46 chromosomes on the other side of the cell. Okay? Then in telophase, a nuclear membrane forms around those 46 chromosomes. Okay? So we have 46 chromosomes on each face, on each side of the cell. Okay? So here's another picture of that. So we've got our 96 chromosomes. You start to see them. They line up, 46 pairs. They split, 46 on each side. 46 on each side in telophase. So that's what happens in meiosis 1. So we get the same results in meiosis 1 that we get in mitosis. We get two cells, okay, that are produced with 46 chromosomes that are identical to the parent diploid cell with 46 chromosomes. I'm going to abbreviate chromosomes with a C or you could write them with an X, although those are pairs. So mitosis and meiosis 1 reproduce the same results. But then, like I said before, in order for sex cells to be produced, the, that diploid cell has to go through meiosis 2. So what happens in meiosis 2 is the same thing as meiosis 1, except we start off with 46 chromosomes. So remember, we have two cells now, okay, because through meiosis 1, we created two new cells. Each of those two new cells start have 46 chromosomes, okay, so they have 46 chromosomes. Then they're going to go through, if you look below, I've got it labeled, they're going to go through a second phase of PMAT. So in prophase, the chromosomes, are you're able to see them, okay, so 46 chromosomes, 46 chromosomes. In metaphase, those chromosomes pair up and line up in the middle. So now we have 23 pairs of 46 chromosomes in each cell. Okay? So four, 23 pairs of 46 chromosomes lining up in the middle. In anaphase, those chromosomes split. The pairs split up. So on each side, we have 23 chromosomes. 23 chromosomes. In this other cell, we have the same thing, 23 chromosomes, 23 chromosomes. Then after anaphase, in telophase, the nuclear membrane forms around those 23 chromosomes. The cytoplasm splits, and we get four sex cells created with half the number of chromosomes, 23 chromosomes. And that is how your sex cells are created. So you start off with a diploid cell with 46 chromosomes. It goes through interphase, doubles its chromosomes to 92, goes through meiosis 1, which is the same as mitosis 1. So you get two cells with 46 chromosomes. Then you go through a second phase of my, my to, uh, prophase, uh, I'm sorry, PMAT. And that's where you get your 23 chromosomes. And you get four cells. So to summarize the results of meiosis, to create these sex cells, okay, you get four new cells that started from one cell. And each of the four cells, there's 23 chromosomes, and they are haploid cells. Okay. Alright, so hopefully that explains how sex cells are formed.
and how they're different from diploid cells.